All right, we'll try it again here and see if it's working any better. Somebody let me know if if uh if it's if you can hear me okay. Sounds good now. Let's see. Hopefully that one reset. That was kind of weird. All right. Well, we'll see if everybody gets on here. We'll give people some time to get on.
Okay, good. Let's let's do that real quick. Mike, Mike check for authorized Mike. How's that coming in? Is it coming in okay? How am I doing? What's up, Ron? Good. All right, we'll listen to this song, and then we'll get going here. Maybe, unless we play another one, but we'll see. We've got about 33 on here. In the words of Pastor Hoggard, stop right there. Number 33. <laughs> I couldn't resist, sorry.
Amen. All right, that song bring tear to your eyes. Uh, praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for for good music. You ought to look out for good music. Uh, give you some hints here. This S.E. Samante, uh, good channel. Uh, all a cappella songs, but really good. I listen to a variety of different music all over, uh, all old fashioned hymns, of course, and things like that. But but uh, there's different varieties of those all over the place. And this channel is. And a, a, just a uh, acapella is what it is, and it's beautiful. I mean, there's a lot of them, so I listen to it sometimes. I go through different phases where I'll, excuse me, I'll listen to certain things for a while, and uh, you know, then then I'll move on to something else and and listen to to you know something a little bit different than that. But uh, but anyway, this this is truly a blessing, and. Uh, these songs really make you think. One thing about a cappella songs, uh, Brother Joshua had said this the other day to me, and I, I agree with what he said, that with a cappella songs, you really you don't you're not thinking about the instruments, you're thinking about the words, you know, and you're really focused on that. So that's a good thing. It's it's good to to do that. It's good to focus on the words and and uh, I think you could do that either way. But I think this is one good way to focus on just the words uh, is you know singing that, uh, listening to that a cappella. So okay, uh, Rosemary Zavrel asks, "How is everyone doing?" I'm doing good, better than I deserve. Uh, doing doing okay. Getting ready to. After this, getting ready to go evangelize and and um, you know you know that that getting getting ready to go evangelize and do the work of the ministry here tonight and get out there and preach the gospel. It's going to be some crazy stuff tonight, no doubt. But uh, we never know what we're going to get into. Uh, usually, Saturday is when it really gets kind of kind of heated up a little bit and so we'll see how that goes but it's it it usually gets pretty crazy uh that's for sure uh and we'll see what the lord does tonight out there now i'm gonna try a new i i got a new gopro because the one that i had and we're still using that one brother jacob or brother josh will be using that but I got a new GoPro because mine is about, I don't know, I bet you it's about six or seven years old. I think I've had that thing. Man, I want to say I want to say since 2013 or 14, since I first started preaching on the streets was about, well, I guess it'd be about 2012 maybe? I don't know. Anyway, um, a number of years. And um, so I had to get a newer one excuse me one that one that um one that is a little more reliable as a as a main and i need to have it on me we trust the lord and god takes care of us but we also need to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove and the thing is is that a lot of people they lie about you so while you're out there preaching they they lie uh, Deborah Hearn asked, have you passed out all the Bible tracts? Well, we passed out 9,700 nearly uh, at the state fair. So we our goal was 10,000, and we got 9,700. So we're praising the Lord. The year before that, I think we only got 6,000 6, maybe. So we really, the Lord really blessed us. Now tonight, we start, and we want to hand out over the weekend, we want to hand out four or five thousand in town here yeah i actually there is a 4k setting on that uh it's the gopro 7 and you know i i got that and i i um i'll have it on the chest mount there and i got some batteries so we'll see Uh, somebody CIA import says always with the Jesuits. You do know that Tel Aviv is the gay capital of the world, and gay marriage, feminism, and abortion are heavily pushed by the Hollywood tribe. Uh, yeah, 
CIA imports. I wasn't, uh, I'm not, I don't live in a box or anything. I understand full well how Hollywood works. I understand full well the Jews. I also understand full well that Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, said, this is the time of the Gentiles until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And still is. So, yeah, I I, I get it. I get it. And by the way, sometime, sometime in the future, I am going to talk about the Kabbalah. I am going to talk about some of those other other uh, things as well. But you have to understand something. Rome is that great city on seven hills, and Rome rules the world. The Jews are a part of that. There are high-level court jester Jews that work for the Pope. And I'm telling you, No one has more money than the Pope. The Roman Catholic Church and the Pope have the blood of the saints on them for years, and they've been killing them for years. They've been robbing them and killing them and setting them up for years. And killing Christians and stealing their lands and stealing everything they had. The Crusades and all that was put on by Rome. So there's a lot that can be said about that. There's a lot that can be said about about how that works. And there's a lot to be said about uh, the Jewish cabal. Absolutely. The Illuminati. But I'll have you know that the Illuminati was started by Adam Weisseft. And Adam Weisseft... Adam Weisseft was a Jesuit priest. He taught doctrine at the Jesuit University. And he started the Bavarian Illuminati because the Pope's papal bull that that um, that banished the the Jesuits. When the Jesuits were banished, they needed money. So they worked with the Jews and the Bavarian Illuminati was founded. And then then came Napoleon. But anyway, that's another story. Altogether that one that I I'm not prepared to tell today because I need to get my facts straight. So, and it's not, I haven't studied enough yet. Anyway, is our, Jesus is awesome asked, is our current Pope dangerous? Yes, he's antichrist. They all are. He's extremely dangerous. He's the highest level pedophile in the world. He runs the greatest, uh, not greatest as in good in God's eyes, but greatest as in evilist, uh, empire. Right? That's right. Joe M. says the Nazis were a modern-day dictator of the Vatican. Well, absolutely right they were. See, the Vatican, uh, the SS was modeled after the Jesuit order. Ignatius Loyola. They modeled, they, they modeled uh, the, the Jesuit order was, mo- or the, the, um, SS was modeled after the Jesuit order. Hitler, admi- Hitler, son of the Roman Catholic Church. That's what was said the day he died. You ask me, do I feel if do I feel that that Pope Francis is a pedophile himself? I have no idea. I I don't know what he is, but a devil. But I will tell you this. He runs and he covers the pedophile ring for the pope or for the for the black pope, if that's not him. But that's another story. Anyway, so there there's there's a lot to be said about the Jesuit general which we're going to get to today, Mr. Jesuit General, the head of the Jesuits, the most power, one of the most powerful men in all of the world. Oh, I don't think Hitler was a girly man. I think he was a devil-possessed man that would cut the nose off your face in a second. Um, 
He was an evil man. Very evil. But the Pope, the Jesuit Pope, the Black Pope, he is called, I believe is the head of the mysteries. I believe he's the head of all the mysterious religions. In fact, Malachi Martin admitted in his book, which most of those guys are just info agents, but there's no reason to lie about that. Half of the men that were in the... I heard this the other day that half of the men that were the cardinals and those that were in there where the Pope was had Masonic rings on. They were Freemasons. Right? They're Freemasons. Who sits on the Supreme Court and hold and, and, and controls it? Jews and Catholics. Knights of Malta, your Supreme Court Justice is a Knight of Malta. Your, your Supreme Court Justice, your, your head of the Supreme Court, uh, the Chief Justice, when he signed Obamacare uh, and skated off, when he, when he proved Obamacare, um, what he did was he ran off to Malta. He vacationed in Malta, and he became a knight of Malta. He got his knighthood from passing Obamacare into law by making Obamacare legal. Right? That's what he did. Now, understand this. I also know that it's spirits that run the world. This is Satan's kingdom. So you have to understand that Satan uses... There's many... Go back and listen to that sermon I preached a long time ago. Let me see if I can find it for you. Well, we'll need that article. Let's see. Let's let's click on that article, then we'll have that. Because we're going to need that today. All right, let's let's click on... Let's go to one of my sermons here. There's the secret files. The backdoor files. Let's see. Here we go. Long time ago. Old sermon. 2014. Satan's kingdom is divided into mysterious compartments. Okay? Okay. So this is this series is called Satan Your Enemy. Wow. So there's some old ones here. 2013, Satan is your adversary. Satan your enemy. Satan your enemy part three. Satan Satan the anointed cherub that covereth. God of this world, war with the saints. Five ways Satan uses the saints to hurt the work of the Lord. That one. Anyway, so there's 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 a lot that can be said about that. So I understand it's the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience that uses it and that that runs all of it. Okay? But first up here, Jesuit Superior General. Now you look at this guy right here. Right? Arturo Sosa. Not to be confused with the old Cubbies player, Sammy Sosa. Arturo Sosa. Jesuit General. Superior General of the Society of Jesus. Right? He goes way back. Is Vice President Mike Pence a Jesuit? Well, he would be a Jesuit coadjutor. He would not be a Jesuit priest. There's a difference. Okay? There's a difference in the two. One just works with, with the Jesuit order. The other is an actual priest in the order. Okay? So... Maybe we'll do a series sometime. I really want to do a series on the Jesuits sometime. I, I really do. And then I want to do one 
sort of on the Kabbalah, but not get into too much weird stuff because I, I just it's weird. All right, I, I don't need to go that far down the rabbit hole there. It's just strange, and it's just it's it's just wicked. So anyway, but. Vatican City, August 21st. I want to show you this. And the reason why I have the Satanic Temple in here is because their beliefs are the same. He believes what the Church of Satan believes and the Satanic Temple believes. That Lucifer, that Lucifer is not a real person, but a symbolic reality. Right? Vatican City, August. This is from Catholic News, by the way. Catholic News Agency. Vatican City, August 21st. The Superior General of the Society of Jesus said August 21st that the devil is a symbol, but not a person. The devil exists as the personification of evil in different structures, but not in persons. Because is not a person, is a way of acting evil. He is not a person like a human person. It is a way of evil to be present in human life. What is he doing? He's allegorizing the scriptures. That's what he's doing. He is, sta- he is allegorizing the Bible and saying, well, Satan's not real. That's what he's doing. He's saying that Satan is not real, but that's not what Jesus said. Look at look what the Bible says about it. Jesus said that thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. So wast thou upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Does that sound like, uh, does that sound like, uh, like, like a picture or a person? That was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. He was, he was created. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. He is the covering cherub. Right? I was looking to see why that doesn't show up, that definition. I don't know what Luke does to this, but he changes this. And it doesn't show the definition of that, and I, for the life of me, I don't understand that why. But anyway, whatever. All right, anyway. So that's a person. Now, also the Bible says, says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out of the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Well, that sounds literal. That don't sound like figurative speech to me. That sounds very literal. As a person. Now, why is that important? The great dragon, that's Satan. The old serpent. Great dragon, old serpent, devil, Satan. Look at that. Four. Four. That number four. The spirit world. Now, why is he called the old serpent? Because look. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God made. Satan is a serpent. Now, what do I believe about Satan in that sense? Well, I actually believe that Satan can shapeshift. 
But I believe one of his appearances is a dragon. Okay. One of his appearances is a dragon. And one of them is a serpent. That could be the same thing, but it could be different as well. Right? So this, uh, and he's a devil. Right? He's a devil as well. So, so you have so you have the serpent, you you have the serpent, you have the dragon, and it it calls him the old serpent. So you know what does that tell you? That tells you to go back to the first reference that you have of the serpent. Look at that. Serpents thirty eight times. Look at look at Revelation twenty, verse two. Uh oh. Everybody's still there. I just got cut off for a minute. I don't know what happened. Boy, I must have made somebody mad. I don't know what happened there. It just cut off on me. Let's see if everyone's still there. That was kind of weird. I don't even know what happened. Hello, Jeremiah from Springfield. I hope you're doing well. Okay, everybody's still here. I'm sorry. I just got I got it got cut off. It just like <laughs> it just cut off on me. <laughs> the whole thing went blank for a minute. Okay, good. All right, good. Well, I'm not crazy, I promise you. Well, I might be a little bit, but anyway, but look at this. Genesis 3 1. That's the serpent. Look at the end. Revelation 20, verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. Okay, so Satan and the devil, a person. All right? A person. Right? Yes, he is a cherub. Yeah, he is a very strange looking being, I think. I actually think that he could shape shift into different things. I, I, I believe that there are more things that he can do than what we understand. Okay? I because the Bible says he could transform himself into a angel of light. Okay? He could transform himself into an angel of light also. So there's some power there that lies there uh in the ability to do that. Now he says here, the Jesuit Pope, Sosa, says good and evil are in permanent war in the human conscience, and we have all we, we have ways to point them out. We recognize God as good, fully good. Symbols are part of the reality, and the devil exists as a symbolic reality, not as a personal reality. Well, stop for a second. Okay? Stop for a second. Let me ask you a question. If Satan is figurative, then is God figurative too? God said very clearly that Satan was lifted up with pride. People are lifted up in pride, right? And that he was lifted up in pride and he exalted himself above the throne. He tried to exalt himself above the throne of God, right? Right? And Satan does speak into your mind, too, or and the devils do, right? But not like the Word of God. It says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? See, when Jesus was dealing with Peter, right?
But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You know what else it says here? Spirits. Look at this. It says here, and after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. Right? What thou doest, do quickly. That thou doest do quickly. That is Satan. He's talking. Now, how does Jesus know who he's talking to? Well, he knows he's a person. That's why. How does he know? Well, he's God, number one. Number two, he already dealt with him right here. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit of the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Right? To be tempted of the devil. Uh, Satan talked to him, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. If thou be, if thou be. That's like when you have all the doubts about salvation, your doubts about your walk with God, your doubts and fears to trust God. There's this, this voice that's like, if thou be, if, 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 if. Right? And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. When the devil, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple. Uh, that's not a figure that did that. That's a person that did that. Satan who the Bible calls the God of this world, took him and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Right? Jesus says unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Right? Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. That's the work that's the work of God. Angels came and they ministered unto him. Right? So Jesus showed us that Satan was a person. He showed us that Satan is a real person. And he absolutely, really hates us. I, If you and I could see how much Satan really hates us, right? Well, let's look at that. The prince of the power of the power of the air. Hey, you know, sometimes my broadcasts and things like that get messed up, and it's because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. By the way, sometimes when I talk about this stuff, weird things happen. Right? The prince of the power of the air. Hello, Beth from Florida. Let me say hi to everybody on here. Lady Techno. So you think Satan gave us modern technology? Uh, partially, but if I told you everything I thought, they'd put me in a funny box. But anyway, I'll tell you sometime. We'll talk about it. But here's a clue. Pastor Hoggard has a lot of good understanding about it, and I agree with him. I agree with him on a lot of things. Not everything, but a lot of things. Anyway, so, hi to Beth. Moon pie. 
Moon Pie Auto. Blaine Lewis. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, let's talk about the Prince of the Power of the Air here. I don't like talking about Satan that much, but, you know, does everybody know what Satan likes? What? Okay. Let's ask a question now, class. Ready? I'm going to ask a question over here in the comment section, and I'll wait for you to answer. What is the Jesuit general doing right now that Satan thoroughly enjoys and is leading him to do? Go. Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find... Holy buckets, there's 10 hours of Jeopardy music. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Anyway, here we go. Here we go. You, Some of you got it right. Some of you got it right, okay? Here it is. The Bible word for it is mystery. Mystery. Okay? A mystery. A mystery. Why is that important? What do I mean by that? Okay. The Jesuit general, it, I told you, was the head of the mysteries. And Satan loves to hide. Do you understand that? He loves to hide his true motives. He loves to hide his true actions. He loves to hide his true identity. He loves to hide it. Watch this. All right. We know it is right here. Nope, that's not it. That's the mystery of godliness. What is the mystery of godliness? The mystery of godliness is God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seed of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Amen. That's what that is. That's the mystery of godliness. But what's the mystery of iniquity? It's nearly the opposite. Mona, I, I didn't erase anything you wrote on there. I didn't see you write anything. I hope you're doing well. Um, for the mystery of iniquity, doth, what, is this, what is this talking about? Why is the Jesuit general covering up for the, for, the, for the Antichrist or for... Why is he covering up for Satan. Why is he making Satan a mere concept and not a person? I'll tell you why. Because of this. Look at this. Let's talk about this. Oh, boy. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, let's get it on the big screen. Put me in the wide shot. Here we go. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letters from us as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. The falling away has to take, take uh, place first. The falling away. 
right? The falling away first, right? That's what the Bible says. So it has to happen first. Then that and that man of sin be revealed, right? That man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition, that's the Antichrist. Look, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Or that is worshipped, so he that as God, look at that, that's capital G. Sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. These people that do not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved and believe this book, this Bible, they're going to believe he's God. Sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Now here it is. What's the Pope covering for? What's the Jesuit general covering for? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Remember, great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. What is the mystery of iniquity? Satan's son. The Jesuit general is hiding Satan's son. That's what he's doing. That's why he's doing what he's doing. Look at this. Remember, you not for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. What are the mysteries in charge of? What do the cults do? What do they do? They hide, they're hiding someone. Who are they hiding? They're hiding the Antichrist. Who's going to rise up out of the pit? He's going to come out of the sea. He's going to come out of the ground. He's going to come. The beast is going to rise, right? The phoenix. All of it. All of it symbolic. So who are they hiding? They're hiding the Antichrist. I'm explaining. So he that as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. When, when the Antichrist comes on the scene, when he comes on the scene, his coming is after the working of Satan. But they're going to hide it. They're going to hide that fact. Why? Well, Satan is just a concept. He's not a real person. He's a concept. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things, and now ye know what we withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Right? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Wow. The spirit of his mouth is the word of God. I just thought of that. Uh, Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. His appearance. (laughs) It's funny, Mike. (laughs) Oh, man. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Who is the lie? The Antichrist. Yes, Mystery Babylon, Moon Pie. That's right, Mystery Babylon. That's exactly right. That's what all those mysteries are. They're all Babylon. They're all tied together. And Babylon is a spirit. 
Satan. That's Babylon. That's the mystery. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's the mystery, right? For the myst- It's the mystery of iniquity versus the mystery of godliness. This is the mockery. That's why This is what ties this in to explain to you what's going to happen. What is Satan a master of? Mocking. Mimicking. Not mocking so much as mimicking. He mimics. He copies. He counterfeits. If you have a counterfeit bill in your pocket, it looks close to the real thing, doesn't it? And only when it's held up to the light, only when it's held up to the light, can it be properly examined to know whether it's real? So when the Antichrist comes after the working of Satan, we're not going to be able to trust our eyes. Listen to me, please. We're not going to trust our eyes. We're not going to trust our thoughts. We're not going to trust our the voices that we hear or anything like that or what we see or what we smell or what we feel. We're not going to trust our feelings. What are, what are we going to have to hold it up to? The light. The word of God. The word of God. Check this out. Let me show you something else. Look at this. John eight forty four. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. So he was in the truth before, and he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him, so he lost all bit of truth. He's a liar. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Okay? All right, you ready? Here's the question. Here's the question. I want to go back to my Jeopardy music. Now I have a question for you. He's the father of the lie, the father of it. What what do you believe that's talking about, the father of it? Okay, time's up. Here's what I believe that's talking about very clearly. He's the father of it. Look at this. Let's look at this again. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Who is his own? Who is his own? His son. Satan's son. Satan's son. The Antichrist. 
the Antichrist. He is the father of it. What? Okay. Okay. Here's another way to ask this. Here's another way to ask this. Satan is a counterfeiter, right? He counterfeits things. Jesus is the Son of God. God manifests in the flesh. Jesus is the truth, right? Then who is the lie? Ready? Bingo! Lady Techno gets it! His own. Yeah, Lisa, you got it too. That's right. Lisa got it right too. It's the Antichrist. He is the father of the lie. The father of it. What will come? The lie. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And what is the Antichrist? Right? He's the son of perdition. He's a liar. And Satan is the father of it. He's the father of the greatest lie that is ever going to be told. Right? Lisa, you got the question right. You said his own. That's the Antichrist. Let's look at the, let's look at the verses again. Ye are of your father the devil, Jesus said to them, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Right? He speaketh of his own. Tis. For he is a liar and the father of it. What does John do? John is the only apostle besides, well, he talks more about it. He talks more about it. That's right, Lisa. You got it. You already got it right. Um, he talks more about the Antichrist than anybody. John does in his writings. Why? Because John always talks about the truth, and we know the truth, and we know, 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 right? John's always talking about what we know, not what we feel, but what we know. We know by what is written. But what's the Antichrist going to do? Be look at, look, Jesus said it. He said who they are, what he is. And, and he's going to deceive. He's going to deceive the masses. That's what he's going to do. Everybody he can, he's going to deceive. Because now, now look at that. Now go back to, to this. By the way, I thought I was going to go a lot of different directions today, but this is where I'm going, so this is fine. Look at this. Now read this again. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. What's, what's going on here? What, let no man deceive you. So it's about deceit, right? It's about deceit. It's the mystery of iniquity. Mystery of sin. Right? He's wicked. God's going to destroy him with the spirit of his mouth. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. So they're going to believe what? Strong delusion. They're going to believe the lie. What is the greatest lie? The Antichrist. He is the greatest lie. He is the greatest lie that will ever be told on people. To people. To get them to believe. The lie. And he's going to be doing it by signs and lying wonders. So then move in with your... So now come to this guy. The Jesuit general. The head of the mysteries. 
right? Sosa's remarks came after he participated in a panel discussion at a Catholic gathering in Rimini, Italy, organized by the Communion and Liberation Ecclesiastical Movement. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that Satan was at first a good angel made by God. The devil and the other demons were indeed created naturally good by God, but they became evil by their doing. Angels, the Catechism says, are spiritual, non-corporal beings. They are personal and immortal creatures, it adds, who have intelligence and will. Sosa, 70, was elected in the, the Jesuits' superior general in 2016. A Venezuelan, he has a pontificate license in philosophy and a doctorate in polit- political science. A master of political science. He served as a Jesuit prov- provincial superior in Venezuela from 96 to 2004, and in 2014 began administrative role at the general Curia of the Jesuits in Rome. Sosa has offered controversial comments about Satan in the past. In 2017, he told El Mundo that we have formed symbolic figures such as the devil to express evil. See that? Do you see that? Think about that. Let's see here. Hang on, I was looking for something. Give me a second. I don't have it today. (laughs) I don't have it today, but the Grand Lodge of Italy, it now offices in Rome at the Piazza Campo Marzia. Uh, By the way, that's right down the road from the Vatican, basically. I mean, it's, it's right there. It's, it's right there. Uh, somebody asked the question. The Talmud is Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah. Yes, it is. Right. It's kind of weird. Okay, anyway, uh, let's see. Pastor, this makes me think of your sermon that shows how the Antichrist will try to mimic Christ to deceive the world. Yep. Yep. And that that is what he's going to do. So that's the counterfeit. That's the counterfeit that he's going to do. He's going to counterfeit. That's, That's what you have to understand. That's another word for anti is counterfeit. Okay, it means the same thing. So he's going to counterfeit Christ. Right? Let's see if there's a let's see if there's anything else here about Oh creepy Pope Francis. Man, that guy's a creep. Creepy dude. Creepy dude, creepy, creepy dude. The Pope said he's glad that Americans criticize him, by the way. Well, good. I'll tell you one thing. He'd chop your stinking head off if he could get away with it right now. And he could in some ways. Anyway, but, um, yeah, the Pope runs the mafia. The Pope runs the mafia, absolutely runs it. Okay, so... um, Interesting. All right. So you have the you have the Jesuit order. You have the you have the superior general, the head of the mysteries, which he is. One wears black, one wears white. 
By the way, the current Pope is a Jesuit. Right? That's right, Rain Country. We have to be careful what we trust. It has to be the Word of God. It can't be our feelings. It can't be our eyes even. Why do I say that? I'm going to tell you why I say that. Rel, rel, I, I agree with you the Pope's a joke, but the, but the black Pope is not, and they're dangerous. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus said that, that have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil, right? And that Satan entered into him, right? Oh, I think Jewish Zionists have a lot of power. I absolutely think they do, but they don't have as much power as the Pope does. But I'm not going to argue about that today. We're not going to get into a big knockdown, drag out battle about that, but I'll prove it later. Yes, uh, somebody made a comment. Uh, Tom Hanks said that uh, that Satan is allowed to do right. He can't do anything that he's not allowed to do. God allows him to do certain things, and that's right. He does, uh, and he can only do that, uh, go, to only do so much. Yeah, Joe, we're going to talk about that here in a, in a few minutes, uh, about about that. Needless to say, yeah, there are signs and wonders going on right now. Is Beijing reprobate being devil? I don't know what that means. Oh, is being reprobate being devil? A devil. Uh, no. Judas Iscariot is a really interesting character. There's a lot about him that I... I uh there there's a lot that I could say about Judas Iscariot. Um Well, let's look at it. I'll show you. Why not? Hey, why not? Um All right. All right, let me show you something. Now this is food for thought. Now don't All right, I'm going to pose a question to you. Could Judas Iscariot be the Antichrist? We know he was Antichrist, but could he be the Antichrist? Now, that's a question I'm not giving you an answer for today and saying this is 100% and you have to believe this, and if you don't, uh, then you're wrong or I'm holding to this or whatever. I I think there's some interesting possibilities. That's what I'll put, okay? Jesus said this about Judas Iscariot. He said, while I was with them in the world, I kept them by thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. Okay? So the son of perdition. Who is... The Antichrist, but there's only there's two witnesses to that word in the scriptures. That phrase, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Right? Right? So think about that. So then, so then, so we have son of perdition. All right, now check this out. This is the only man the Bible says this about. Look at this. There's no other man in the scriptures that this says this about. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Right. So the Bible says that Satan entered into Judas. God, Jesus said that, told us that, and then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest do quickly. So 
Satan entered into him, right? Then what else does he say about Judas? Look at this. John 6, 70. Remember John 6, 6, 6? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They were the John 6, 6, 6 disciples. And boy, they turned into hating. Right? I've met a bunch of them guys. Man, they hate my guts. Ooh-wee. Look at this. Look at this. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it is for it was for what for it was that should betray him being one of the twelve. For he it was that should betray him being one of the twelve. Oh wow, I just counted that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Look at that. There's thirteen words he said there. That's crazy. I just saw that. Right? I just saw that. That's 13 words there. That word 13 is rebellion. It's the number for rebellion. It's the mystery of iniquity. It's the mystery of uh, 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 Babylon the Great. Wow. I just noticed that. That's crazy. Anyway. Let me count that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 words right there. Yeah, I just saw that. That's crazy. Praise the Lord. Okay, anyway, have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? Right? So look at that. So, so let's look at the evidence. No, he didn't. He Judas did not repent. It says he repented unto himself. That's the sorrow of this world that worketh death. Yeah, did you see that? 13 words. That's crazy. Anyway, so you have Judas, right? You have Judas. He's called the son of perdition. Judas did kill himself. Yes, he did. He hung himself. He went out and hung himself. Uh, the son of perdition. You have Jesus calling him a devil. You have Satan entering into him. Right? You have Satan entering into him. Now here's another one. Look at this one. Talking about Judas, right? Who fell into transgression. Uh, let's go back here. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us and obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, and so much as the field is called in their proper tongue, al -Kadama. Akeldama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishop prick let another take. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied us with us all the time of the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must be one ordained to be a witness with us of, the re of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two hast thou chosen, 
that he may take part of this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. His own place. Right? That's interesting, isn't it? Now, is he just a type of the Antichrist that is so close? But let me ask you a question. If somehow, if some way, this man either is the false prophet or the Antichrist, and he comes back on the scene again, again, it's just possibilities. I'm not laying down Bible doctrine as this is the way it's got to be. I'm saying there's a lot of things in here. A whole lot. Right? Right? Anyway, so so think about this. If he goes to his own place, if he does, check this out. It says, let me see. Let's see, let me that's the wrong phrase. Give me a second. Oh, here it is. I know what it is. Here it is. Check this out. And the beast that was, so he was, okay, the beast that was and is not now, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. Right? Think about it. It's interesting, isn't it? And who is the son of perdition that was and is not now and goeth into perdition? Check this out. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns. And upon his head the names of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. So he talks about the beast, okay? See, there's another beast too. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him that causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, beast whose deadly wound was healed. Interesting. Anyway, so as an Antichrist figure, we know for sure he is. Um, but boy, oh boy. Is that ever an interesting study? Right? When you start to look at that, you start to analyze that a bit. It's like, hmm, there's some interesting things there about Judas Iscariot. Right? There's some things there that, that kind of interesting, thought-provoking, something to think about. I mean, here was Judas Iscariot the whole time. Who, if he was to come back on the scene, if that was possible, right? Think about it. 
if he was to come back on the scene, who better than someone that walked three and a half years with Jesus and fooled all the apostles? Who better to come and fool Israel? There was another interesting phrase that I saw one time. It was the man from Kiriath. Let's see. I don't remember what that was though. I can't I can't remember it right now. By the way, hey, here's another one. Judas is in the Bible thirty three times. The name Judas is in the Bible. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. And I know it's not all the same Judas, but it is kind of interesting, though, right? You got to admit, it's interesting. Okay. And Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, they went into the house of Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, one of the chief priests, to betray him unto them. And Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which is also the traitor. And saith one of his disciples, Judas, I'm just looking at these to see if there's anything I want to go over with you. So Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, it says. Right, so anyway, so he's sitting at the table, right? He's sitting at the table with him. And... uh he betrays him right there. Let's see here. What do we have here over here for questions? Or what's going on here? Let's see. Lady Techno wants prayer for a husband. Sure, we'll definitely do that. Jason, do you think if the Antichrist is a man to be born, or do you think he's alive today and waiting to be revealed? Good question. I, you know, I'm not at all, I'm not 100% sure about that. If he's going to be some kind of hybrid, he's going to be a seed, the seed of Satan for sure. And the spirit of Satan is going to come upon him um, and be in him. He's going to be the full embodiment of Satan. You know, the mystery of iniquity. I don't think he can, obviously he can't do what the Lord did, but he does know, but we know from the sons of God and daughters of men, we know that they, they are able to mimic DNA. So, we know that to be true. Yep. Hiram Abiff, yeah, that's the Antichrist. Absolutely. That's what all the mystery religions do. They have an Antichrist. The Ascended Masters, they have an Antichrist. Uh, the Jesus of the Mormon Church is Antichrist. The Jesus of the JWs is Antichrist. They're all Antichrist. Uh, why they asked Jesus who touched him, did he know? When they asked Jesus who touched him, did he know? Yes. Somebody asked a question. Uh, when, when it was asked... Uh, why did Jesus ask that question? Well, Jesus always asked questions as a form of communicating with people so they would know actually what was in their heart. Jesus always knew because he knew the hearts of all men, but he would ask the questions to make them consider when they're answering him. Okay. So he, and also like with the woman, when he said, who touched me for, I perceive that, that virtue has gone out of me. Jesus asked that question. So she would confess. 
right? So she would stand up and she would confess. That's why. Because asking people questions um, is a wonderful form of communication to try to deal with others. It, it helps them to think. Right? So that's why he does it. Do you have any thoughts on black goo? Is that like Mr. Magoo, only black? I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that before. All right, somebody asked me, who do you believe the two witnesses will be? Do you think it's Enoch and Elijah? No, I think it's Moses and Elijah, and I think we know that because they've already been here. They've already been here. Moses and Elijah were on the mount with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. So... I believe that I believe that Jesus or that that the, the that the two witnesses were already there. They were already it was already showed us who they are. Because the same miracles that are done the same miracles that were done are done now. Black goo is programmable matter. Okay, well I have to look into that. I don't have any clue what that is. Yes, they do both represent the law and the prophets. And what did Jesus say? The law and the prophets testify of him. Uh, Moses also did. Was Jesus MGTOW? What's MGTOW? Well, here's the thing. Rain Country says, I find the concept of Enoch and Elijah to be interesting since it is appointed once for every man to die. Well, that's a good point. However, here's the thing that you have to here's the thing that you you have to think about, okay? There is a general rule in scripture, but there are also exceptions to those rules. Right? There are exceptions to those rules. The general rule is it is appointed a man once to die. But we also know that if we are alive and remain, we shall be caught up in the air to meet the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, and we won't die. So the general rule is that we're going to die. Here's another one for you. The general rule is that it's appointed a man once to die, but Lazarus died twice. The girl that was dead and Jesus touched the buyer died twice. Right? I can show you, I can show you that there are many people that died twice that were raised from the dead. So think about it that way, that they don't have to die. The general rule is that it's appointed a man wants to die. That's the general rule. But it doesn't have to be. God can make exceptions. And he showed that clearly. Men getting triggered over women? Was Jesus MGTO? Uh, was Jesus scared of women? Are you really asking me that question? No, Jesus isn't scared of women. He created them. But he had no interest in them. Why is that? Because he's God. He's God. He, you have to understand the way God thinks. God doesn't think like a man thinks. Do you understand that? God doesn't look at man and he doesn't think like man does. He doesn't look at a woman and think any thoughts of Attraction. Because he's God. He's holy. God did not create man because he was lonely. Okay? 
God needed nothing. We add nothing to God. Right? We add nothing to God. God is complete and whole within himself. So we we don't need Well now listen guys in defense to Deborah um in defense to Deborah you have to understand there's some cultures out there and there's some pop culture out there and some teachers out there uh or or some thoughts out there that people make up and we need to be able to have an answer. We can't assume that everybody understands or everybody is is like gets it okay there are people that are not grounded there are people that are new christians that don't that don't understand okay so try to be patient with people god will teach you patience by afflictions if you don't be patient with people i i deborah's asked me a lot of questions over the years and you know, some of them I don't understand why she asked me probably or at the time I don't remember, but I remember her asking me some different questions and things like that or had some different comments. But we don't know where people are coming from, okay? So it might have been a sincere question and I think it was. I think she just she's she may when you're on a thread like that, you don't always phase it uh, phrase it right, okay? So it just kind of gets thrown out there, but I don't want to be too hard on her, okay? She she didn't reject the information that I gave her. Um and I, I mean, I, if she's being blasphemous, God will deal with that. But if she's honestly, if somebody has thrown that up to her and you're in a small circle of people, um, um, then, then, you know, you, maybe she doesn't have anybody to ask. I, I, I don't know. I'm just saying I, I, people's, people's, um, understanding can be very, very skewed when you're by yourself. So, um, well, I don't I question the Christianity of the people that try to say that Jesus was afraid of women. They need to get in the Bible. That's right, Rain Country. Uh questions need to be be asked. I just sometimes I'd throw it off that's why I was like, Are you seriously asking me that? Or is that a real question? You know, because you never know. I get spammers on here. I get people asking me crazy stuff and they're just you know, but whatever. I so let's let's try to have patience and love one another. Okay, let's extend let's extend much grace to each other because we all need it. All right, let's have a good spirit with each other and try to be um, kind. All right, try to be kind. They raced me off your feed. Well, I don't know why they did that. I'm such a nice guy. Somebody asked me a question up here. Um, was it? Maritas. Let's see. Pastor, do you think Solomon is in hell for practicing witchcraft and marrying all those women who turned his heart from God? No, I do not. All right? I do not. And I'll show you from the Bible. Okay? Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, let's see. I got to find it. Hold on a second here. see no that's not it let's see
Let me see. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Trying to find the right one here. All right, hang on a second. I'll get you. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it's okay. So the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Okay. Now look at this. But in Second Samuel seven fifteen. God said, but my mercy shall not depart away. I Okay, hold on. Let me back up here. And when thy days be fulfilled, he's talking to David. He said, when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. So God said that his mercy would not leave Solomon. Okay? God promised that. God promised that his mercy would not leave Solomon, right? He promised it. Why did he leave Saul? Well, because Saul rejected the word of the Lord and went to a witch, knowingly went to a witch. Saul rejected God's word. Yes, Solomon was saved. And I'll show you this. I'll show you Solomon's repentance. Ecclesiastes is a book of Solomon. Ecclesiastes is a book of Solomon. Um... His lamenting of all that he did. What does Solomon say through the whole book of Ecclesiastes? Vanity, vanity, all is vanity, saith the preacher. All is vexation of spirit. He said, I got me men servants, and I got me, he sounded like a pirate. Arr! I got me men servants, and I got me maid servants. Arr! And I got me this, and I got me clothes, and I got me everything, and I got me women. He's like a pirate. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, but. That's what he said, right? He got all those things, but nothing made him happy, right? Nothing made him happy, but look what it says. Look what he says here at the end of Ecclesiastes. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Right, Kevin, from an earthly perspective. That's right. Under the sun, right? That phrase, under the sun. I think it's the under the sun. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's 29 times in the book of Ecclesiastes. So the theme, the theme The theme of, of Ecclesiastes is all is vexation of spirit under the sun. Why? Because there isn't a man that had more than Solomon, and it didn't make him happy. 
right? And Solomon built false uh, worship. I mean, he built the the um, houses of the false gods for them, for his women, for his wives, right? And God was angry. Why? Because God had appeared unto him twice. Right? God had appeared unto him twice. And God was angry with him. Right? God was angry with Solomon for what he had done. Let's see, let's move forward here with Solomon. Look, when Solomon started, it says here, And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places, and the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. The Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, so That's when Solomon asked for wisdom. Too bad he didn't ask for a heart. Of understanding. Right? To follow the Lord God. But you know, it shows us that every man in the Bible is fallible. Because look at this. But Solomon was building, but Solomon built him a house, right? Uh, but Solomon was built built his own house thirteen years. He finished the, and it finished all his house. So it says here he loved many strange women. But King Solomon loved many strange women, with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zinians, Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord had said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love, and he had seven hundred wives and princesses and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as, his heart, as the, was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidian, Zidians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then Solomon did build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab in the hill, that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for the strange wives which burn incense and sacrifice unto their gods. So the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant, my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom. So he was punished. God chastened him as a son. Right? God chastened him. That's why Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only one that was perfect in the Bible. All the others... All other men, flawed. All other men, failures. All other men, but. Right? One king, it was said he was marvelously helped till he was strong. And then he became lifted up with pride. Right? That's right, because Jesus is God. That's right. So he was perfect. Yep, I believe that too, Katie Porter. That's exactly. I believe the Jews will hear those two witnesses. Because there's no stronger witness than Moses for the Jews. Right? Um, obviously, besides Jesus. But um, but they wouldn't believe Jesus. But when the law and the prophets speak, 
and bear witness. It's going to get real interesting. Well, I all I know is that if you depart from the living God as a born-again Christian, and you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, then you're going to be chastened of the Lord. Look at David's sin. Think about David's sin. David sinned grievously against the Lord, right? But now think of his sin. He sinned very grievously against the Lord, but think of his punishment. Fourfold punishment that David received, right? Fourfold punishment that David received. And it's terrible. I mean, David, it was it was bad. It was bad. So, anyway, um, that's to answer your question. Well, we just basically turned it into the Jesuit general hiding Satan's mystery, Judas Iscariot, and a Q&A. Well, that's okay. That worked out good. So... David was very God-fearing, and he walked with the Lord. And the Bible says that uh, that David. The Bible says that David. Um. That he only departed from the Lord once. That doesn't mean he never sinned. It means that he never grievously departed. But by the way, for a Christian, the Bible says there is a sin unto death. So there is a sin so wicked that if a Christian would do it, for each Christian that that may be different. But there is a sin that if a Christian did it, God would just kill him for it. Right? Well, hello, Isaac, from Kenya, Africa. Glad you found us here. Hope you're doing well. All right. Well, let's see if there's anything else here. I don't know if I missed anything. Uh, let's see. Right. Uh, blaspheming the Holy Ghost is for the lost, not the saved. The lost blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I don't believe the saved are able to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I think that's a sin of the lost. I believe the sin unto death. Uh, excuse me. The believe the sin unto death can be anything. It does. The Bible doesn't tell us what it is. Uh, and I think it's different for each person. I think it'd be something that that person would do that would be so terrible that God would kill them. Yep. We'll pray for you that the Lord would uh, give you give you a husband. Oh. Is there anything unforgivable? Um, no. Is manipulation a form of witchcraft? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The only thing unforgivable is blaspheming against the Holy Ghost, but that's only a lost person that can do that because a saved person is already saved. So they really can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Not their new man can, anyway. Their flesh still sins. But what is Brexit, and does it have eschatological significance? It has been a concern for me for a while. Uh, Brexit is the plan of Britain to leave and take the British pound with them and run their own currency and not be a part of the EU and run their own trade agreements and everything else. They don't want to go down with the sinking ship of the EU. I think it does have 
to do with the end times and the ten toes and and the new federation of nations that will come out of the EU breaking up. Because the EU is going to literally, the EU is going to literally crumble. You know. So, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, so that's what I believe that, that Brexit is about. Well, I, I might go live tonight, okay, at the event. We'll see how the event goes, but I might go live there. And we might see you live, if not tonight, then downtown. Oh, boy. Why are there such weird people? Uh, Candace Owen is calling it Blexit. Black and brown folks leaving the Dem party. Oh, yeah. I, I'm so sick of politics. It's all just a stinking game. It just drives me crazy. American politics especially just drive me nuts, man. It's just a stinking waste of time. It's like this this Comey. Uh, he's clearly a crooked FBI agent, and and Bob Bob Barr doesn't indict him. And then you have Epstein getting killed, the pedophile getting killed or killed. I don't think he's dead, but I think he just I think they just gave him a facelift and got him out of there. He's a billionaire. They don't die that easy. They just don't. You just don't kill a billionaire. But uh, I just get sick of it. I, it's just a big joke and now it seems like they're just tanking trump they're just completely tanking him down it's weird i've noticed it for the last three weeks there's everything's bad news every day like there's no good news any every day about it i just i just hate watching it it's like facebook i i really hate facebook i hate it i i like this platform because i can just do my broadcast and go about my studies and do everything you know, and I don't really have to think about all the interaction with Facebook and its war of arguments that goes on. Anyway, uh, but praise the Lord. We'll pray for us. We're going to be out there tonight preaching, and we could use the prayers. It's going to be crazy, of course, and um, Lord willing, uh He'll he'll t- he'll take care of us like he always does, and pray for our ministry, our needs, our tracks that we're producing, uh, our finances, and everything else. That the Lord would continue to sustain us through all things, and uh, and meet our needs and take care of us. And we're going to be doing a lot of evangelism. I mean, tomorrow we're going to be out all day preaching and teaching all the way into the night. We won't get back until probably eleven o'clock at night. It'll be late. Um, Yeah, I've never heard of that guy. Somebody asked me, will there be a financial collapse? Yeah, there's going to be another market. Excuse me. There's going to be another market crash. It's coming in the in the, in the the market. It's coming. Amen. Pray for a young lady you gave the gospel to yesterday. She was reading a Joyce Meyer Bible, so I gave her my spare King James. Good. Good for you. Yep, pray for us. We definitely need it. We're, we're, um, we'll be out late to, uh, tonight, late tomorrow, all day tomorrow, really. Um, and then into the evening, um, and then Sunday we'll be, we'll be tracting the parade and, uh, there's thousands that'll be at that parade. A sermon on politics would be nice. Hmm. Well, I won't preach on politics usually from the pulpit, but I will do it from here. Um, and we could talk about some politics. That'd be fine. Yeah, I got to wake up. That's right. Um, yep, I saw that tabloid too, Mike, when I was at there. That's funny. 
Amen, Rain Country. That's good. I'm glad you found that. Uh, and praise the Lord you were able to give that Bible to somebody else that needed it. Amen. Always pick those up cheap. Uh, if you pick them up cheap, just grab those Bibles and take them uh, with you, and you can pass them along to somebody else. Praise the Lord for that. That's good news. That's really good news for modern men. <laughs> anyway, but you pray for us, okay? You you keep us in your prayers, and, and we'll try to stream tonight. Uh, live out there and see what happens. I might try to stream from my new GoPro. It's only like 90, 960. It's, I think it's like 720. I, I don't know. It's 960 recording if I if I put down the lowest recording. It's got stabilizer in it. It's pretty cool. But I, I want to try to do that. So I'll show you what Northfield's like. <laughs> uh, anyway, but it'll be good. Uh, and um, I appreciate the prayers. I really do. So does the church. Uh Yeah, we're not Catholic. Um, yeah, so uh, it's pretty bad. I appreciate it, Stephen. I appreciate the prayers. Uh, I'm very grateful for those, and we'll we'll stay safe. Uh, Lord willing, everything will be all right. Amen. Uh, but we're looking forward to getting out there and. Doing what the Lord's called us to do. What do you think about the red flag gun laws? Uh, I think mental health is really what they're after. They want to use mental health to try to keep guns out of people's hands. Uh, that's why they're. That's also why they're legalizing pot everywhere. They're legalizing pot everywhere because it's a psychoactive drug, and they can. If people are high, then they can't get a, a a carry permit. They can't have a gun. What time were you on cam in the UK? Uh. Well, every day I'm I'm two to four. Well, Monday, Wednesday, two to four p.m. Central Time, and then uh, Fridays it varies. The times vary, so the times vary. Usually, I try to be like, well, it's two to four right now, so that's what I did today. Amen. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. And and uh, so I can't tell you tonight what time that'll be. Uh, we'll be going out in about an hour or so, so I got to get out of here. So anyway, you all have a good night, and uh, we'll catch you later. Uh, thanks for, for listening. Hope, hope, hope your uh, weekend goes well.